You may have been kind enough to watch over Christmas, when this channel counted out the 12 Master System games you should buy first to start your collection, for a total outlay of about £100 on eBay. And obviously, after you've bought those 12, you'll want the other 255 UK releases. Some of those, though, are not so cheap. These aren't always the rarest. Some come up rarely, but don't go for that much. These are the ones you'll probably be able to find quite easily. For a price. Here then, are the four most expensive UK releases and one bonus game to get a boxed copy of, using the metric of CEX's list prices. Commence the chart countdown. Number 5. Masters of Combat. I own this. I have owned this for years. I have absolutely no idea where I got it or how much I paid for it. I can tell you though, it absolutely wasn't 130 English pounds, even back in the days when 130 English pounds was worth something. It's a shame really, because it's a very near mint copy, except that the spine was obviously left in a greenhouse behind several magnifying glasses judging by that fading. But is it a game worth having mint? I'll be honest, I actually had little to no idea what this was until I was surprised to see it on this list. What this actually is, is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. Interesting. It'll be contentious, but I don't think this is a genre that really came of age until the 16 bits gave the ability to chuck stuff around a screen with abandon. There's also not a lot of competition on the Master System for this one, although we'll come to that. So there is a gap here for me to find two misconceptions wiped out. But if you're going for a complete collection, is this £100 plus you're going to resent, or at least be glad you have a gem hidden enough that there's no Wikipedia article on this game? And that's strange too, because it's by Soft Innovation Multi-Success, better known as Sims. If you're a Yesterzine viewer, you might remember their version of Aladdin, distinct from both the SNES and Mega Drive one, but very much as fun. They were prolific on the Master System. Master of Darkness, the nearest thing the machine has to a Castlevania game is theirs. If you own the machine in the day, there is every chance you had one of their two Wimbledon games as well, or their other tennis game. They wrote enough games for Sega, and all but one of their SMS games were Sega published, that this isn't even their last game on this list. Well first things first, this attract mode is impressive. It takes my objections about flinging things around, and at least on first impressions, makes them look insane. There's very little flickering here, and this looks for all the world like watching a lower res version of the arcade game it never was. There's even some animation in the background of these surprisingly detailed stages. There's even a story with an intro, some nonsense about a UFO. You'll forget it immediately, but it's one of the many ways that this feels like a game a generation newer than it actually is. The full presentation is just absolutely top-notch in all respects, even down to the four varied playable characters. It borrows from the best too. The intro is a little bit like Mortal Kombat's for instance, but if that's true then the stage introductions and, much more noticeably, the destroyer vehicle bonus stage are swiped directly from Street Fighter. What isn't borrowed from Street Fighter is the control choice elephant in the room. The Mars system has a grand total of two buttons to play with. But Sims have, for some reason, decided to use one of them for jump. In a fighting game. It's brave. Playing the game through though, you see the rationale. Yes, it is a jump button, in that you use it for jumping. But what Masters of Combat really had is a perform acrobatics button. It's how you slide around the play area, and once you get it sorted, you actually have a pretty big freedom of movement here. It does mean that sometimes jump doesn't quite do what you're expecting when you expect it to, but it's pretty reliable. The downside to this of course is that all your methods of causing damage sit on a single button. For punches, kicks and essentially all your special moves, of which this game actually has a few. And this does restrict your freedom a little, but you can muddle along and it makes this a different prospect to the many other 8 and 16 bit fighters of this world. There's even a measure of depth to the AI. I figured out my way past the first two fairly easily, but the third was very much set up to counter my move quick and punch quicker tactic, and killed me several times before I took a round off them by using more of the game's low punches and throws. 
I'm not going to pretend anything we're going to look at today is worth the amount of money it goes for, but I don't think I'm spoiling much by suggesting this is probably the only time today I'm going to tell you this is genuinely the best game in its genre for the machine. And it is. I want to go back and learn how to make this thing work, and that's an incredibly rare thing for me with fighters of any generation. It's a genuinely impressive title I suspect has slipped under many more radars than it deserves to. Alternatives are obvious. The UK is, as always, our focus here, and the Master System got releases of both the first two Mortal Kombat games. Much of a muchness between them, they're both merely uncommon levels of rare, and play a surprisingly convincing if cut down version of themselves. Of course, they're never going to be the best version of those games. Masters of Combat is, and was a Master System exclusive everywhere except Japan, where a Game Gear version exists as Buster Fight. Looking outside the UK on Mars System, you have the miracle working version of Street Fighter 2, but that's even more expensive. And again, buy a SNES. There's also a port of Mortal Kombat 3, but please ignore that. It's a Game Gear game and plays badly in a smaller window than either of the two real ones. I'll say it, best one-on-one -on -one fighter on the system. If you're an emulator or EverDrive player, get on this. If you're collecting, for your money at the very least, you're getting a uniquely playing system exclusive for your clearly far too much cash. Number 4. Championship Hockey. This is the other one I own, and this time I know what I paid, and where. As kids we used to go to Wales on holiday, where a couple of the markets had decent game stalls. On one of those trips, I picked up this near-mint copy of Championship Hockey from the slightly slow-to-react Ron's Tapes for £10. I know this, it's still just about got the price sticker. It's also even got the registration card. And actually, this is a more important entry in video game history than it might seem, because while it's been called Championship Hockey and is published by US Gold, what this actually is, is a port of the first of the now-famous EA Sports NHL games. I love those EA titles. I own NHLPA 93 twice. The MS can technically do an ice hockey game. I'm no fan of Slapshot, but at least it proves that. This... this is not... good. For a start, it's a flickery hell. You could blame the Mars system for this. It does have trouble throwing a lot of sprites around after all. And you could sell that to me, if it wasn't for, say, the by then four-year-old speedball, which has absolutely none of these issues. The technical issues certainly don't stop there. It moved quick enough, just about, but the scrolling cannot begin to keep up. Probably the vast majority of the goals I scored happened off-screen as the AI, or more often I, shot from halfway down the court. Surely the goalie will save that, you'll say? Well, yes, not so much. The goalies appear to follow the schoolyard practice of being whomever was picked last. I think I saw them save two shots total while I was playing, and more than once the puck seemed to pass straight through them. I'm also pretty convinced that the own goal I accidentally scored early on in the match actually counted for me. It's difficult to know, because showing the score is considerably too much work, and I didn't see it until half-time. That's not the end of the problems. Tackling is a crapshoot, as you'd imagine by the flickering, but even before then, switching players is a thing that works rarely, and when it does, it makes poor choices, leaving you unable to stop the other players walking it into the goal. So ultimately, the game becomes ping it from the halfway line before the AI can do anything. And as a tactic, that was pretty successful for me, allowing me to easily catch up the deficit to the computer I created by trying and failing to score an own goal to test the scoring bug. If you're buying for yourself, this would not be a high recommendation if it were a common game. At £150 if CEX ever see another one, or, more likely, anything up to twice that on eBay, this is a buy only if you need it to complete a collection game, and you'll resent it for that. I am glad 25 year younger me took the hit, so I don't have to. Alternatives? Well, there's only one to my immediate knowledge. Slapshot, one of Sims' rare misses in my book. It's not a great game of hockey, but it's cheap, and it's still a million times better than championship hockey, so it's well worth you taking a risk on if you have a physical machine. If you're ambivalent about your ice hockey game being on Mars System though, get an HLPA 93 for the Mega Drive. It has still not been beaten. 
Number three, Power Strike 2. Power Strike 2 is a shoot 'em up, which sadly I do not own yet. Especially, as of everything on this list, it's probably the hardest to get for CEX's price on eBay, and CEX don't have any. Thankfully, I have friends in high places. Near Margate, in fact. Friend of the channel and shooter fanatic Bloggo's Pal does own a copy of this, so I'll let him talk about it, which he will do when I finish this sentence. Right, Bloggo here, and as that one person that Dudley knows that has a sort of working knowledge of what makes a fairly decent shoot em up, I've been picked to talk about Power Strike 2. So yes, this is Power Strike 2, an upward scrolling shoot em up, one that is actually pretty good. It's got a little bit of a storyline, a setup where you've got to go after sky pirates who are wanted, uh, and you pick your weapon and off you go, and it's very pretty. And there's lots going on. It's got the typical super less style fast gameplay there. The levels are pretty long, which is good in some ways. They can drag on a bit, and you've got some pretty decent end level bosses that are quite large in size. And it's really, really good fun. But obviously it's on this list, so that comes at a price. And that price is astronomical. Currently reaching above £200, and some places £300, that's absolutely insane. But unlike the previous game, Championship Hockey, is it worth it? Because this is a good game. Now, to explain what Power Strike 2 has going for it and why it's so expensive, there's three things you need to know about it. First off, it's an LS game by Compile, so that adds a big dollar sign in front of it, first off. Secondly, it's a European only release, and might have got released in Brazil as well, maybe, I'm not sure, but it didn't come out in Japan, and it didn't come out in the US, so that makes it very unique as well for shoot 'em up fans and LS fans. And lastly, it's a 1993 release, so that makes it the end of one of the end of life games, one of the last games released for the system, at least as far as I know. And that, of course, means a low print run, and it means prices are going to go high accordingly. So you've got masters and completists going after this. You've got shoot 'em up fans. You've got less fans. You've got people from outside Europe who want this game so the price is going through the roof absolutely obscene how much did i pay for it three pounds 99 i shit you not that is how much i paid for it from a little shop in richmond on thames called mad andy's i bet andy is absolutely mad now but you haven't got 300 pounds to spend on a master system game but you do want a decent shooter mark okay so on a budget conservatively with a small c i'm gonna pick it Scramble Spirits. £20 or so will get you a, a box copy of Scramble Spirits. Probably the uh, best alternative if you're on a budget. Um, aside from that, there's probably not much to compare with. There are not many upwards going to shoot ups. I'd leave Bomber Aid on the shelf. Power Strike 1 is still expensive, not expensive for Power Strike 2. And there's Action Fighter, which is a bit more like Sp Spy Hunter, but okay, that's fine. So, yes, there you go. That's a quick overview on Power Strike 2 for the Master System, number 3 in Dudley's list of expensive Master System games for you people trying to get that collection. Number 2. Buggy Run. Here we are then, at the most expensive UK release in CEX's list, and thus quite possibly the most expensive one I have to buy to complete the collection. UK copies actually go for more than this on eBay, but for some reason you can usually get Brazilian copies for about this price. Nonetheless, I so far have not, so over to emulation we go for this one. And from the rolling attract mode demo, we make two observations. One, the music is lovely. Two, the sound effects are ear-bleedingly awful, and for some reason mixed at about three times the volume. This is the other game by Sims on the list, and you could have guessed that, because the first impression of the thing is it's incredibly pretty and runs perfectly. They knew their SMS did Sims, probably down to it being 75% of their name. 
I love me a good remote control racing game. And this handles very well. It's competitive too. The AI are uncharacteristically smart and will absolutely race you, which is by no means always true of these games. This does have the nice effect that you don't have to win every race to take a championship. Because while some of the AI are better than others, they do make mistakes, do get caught up with each other, and do give you a chance. My first Tesco, I only won one race in the season. But I came a close second in the championship, because I was second or at worst third in the other races. I would appreciate a mini-map though. It's a problem that can be solved by learning the courses, sure, but they're still a smidge short on landmarks being an 8-bit game. Do you do find yourself scrambling to keep up with the turns appearing? It's a problem not helped by the fact I can absolutely feel the emulator lag in this playthrough. There are other fringe benefits to winning, as you might expect, in the form of a familiar but comprehensive upgrade shop, with all the usual items such as better engines and tyres, as well as some offensive and defensive weaponry and turbo boosts. As you can see here, my car is currently level 2 sus, much like me in any Among Us game. There's a bunch of other options too. As well as the, let's call it career style mode, there's a one-on-one -on -one against a CPU opponent. This is more imaginative than you'd think as well. You can choose any of the 15 courses in the game, pleasingly zero indexed. There's also something I'm not sure I've ever seen in a game of this type, but I immediately think is the best idea. You get to choose 10 upgrades from the entire pot to take into the race. The fun decision you have to make is that your nitros and missiles count. My CPU opponent took a bunch of those, whereas I decided to just try and outrun him, which ultimately worked. I suspect in a two-player match where you can also do that, it might be a lot more tactical. It's a really interesting idea I look forward to trying out when other humans are allowed to be close enough to play. One other cool feature that helps to make up a little for the lack of map is you can get a nice fly-by preview of any of the courses in the game, so they're not a complete mystery to you. It's a lovely package, and again, it's a standout title for the system, and it's a damn shame you'll struggle to find it for any even remotely sensible price, especially as it's a game that would genuinely benefit from being on real hardware. Alternatives are easy. There are two other similar games that are also different, but both very good. Semi-Rare, the Mars system got a very nice version of Micro Machines that's every bit as good as the other versions of the original. But that will cost you 30 quid, so here's a cheaper suggestion. RC Grand Prix is an earlier attempt at much the same thing from the developers who would later give us the god-awful toys game and Penn and Teller Smoke and Mirrors. Do not hold that against them though, it is a great, if unforgiving, little RC game. Number 1. Les Choux Troupes, Auto du Monde. So the French title might give this away. This never got an official UK release, although copies made it here but it's the single most expensive Master System game you can buy in CEX. If you don't recognise, we know this as The Smurfs. This is the second one, and for those who bunked off French GCSE, it's The Smurfs Travel the World. This being a non-UK release, I have not yet succumbed to its temptation, and actually, as you join me here, I've never played it in any form. So let's rely once again on my trusty Raspberry Pi 3, and you can join me playing this for the very first time. Stand back, we're going in. Now let's give it immediate credit for two things. One, there is an English language in-game option, which is going to make this whole thing a lot less tedious, especially as I couldn't find an English manual. Secondly, there's a very nice intro where the magic crystal breaks, and luckily exactly 21 of them are distributed to each area. Then, there's a platform game, where... Yeah, it appears Smurfs can't swim. Can Smurfs normally swim? Yes. Yes, they can. There's even an entire episode where they teach Grouchy to swim. And this isn't Grouchy. This is apparently Inquisitive Smurf. And you can also play at Smurfette, who has absolutely no differences. Yes, it takes me some time to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing here. You're supposed to ride that bird across. Somehow, you are supposed to know he won't blink out of existence like all the other enemies when you jump on them. Note, also, the cheap platform game trick of the monkey regenerating every time. Those crystal things are the ones you're supposed to collect. 
Apparently there's six in this level, and a lot of them are hidden quite out of reach. It's frustrating. And really, it's a flaw of level design. The actual mechanics of this game are competent, just in environments that are, at best, awkward. It doesn't help also that somehow, according to the wiki, I've managed to start in world four of six, so let's fix that at least. Although we can't. The only levels it's given us the choice of are Africa, the fourth, and the North Pole, the second. I can't seem to change these, so that's weird. But we've done some Africa, so let's try some North Pole. I know what this slightly awkward platformer needs. An ice level, said absolutely no one ever. But again, the problem really is weird level design, and again a weird enemy who appears to be concealing the shards for some reason. But predictably, most of my deaths are skidding off narrow icy platforms, which, if it's not obvious, do indeed have physics, as they say. But again, it's irritatingly not bad. This whole thing is basically generic end-of-life 8-bit platformer, and there are better choices for that on the system, often much cheaper. Even the last UK release, the not dissimilar themed Cheese Catastrophe, doesn't go for this, and it's a much nicer game. Both that and this are on Mega Drive though, and probably easier to come by on that system. So maybe those are a better idea. Master System alternatives? Well, you're asking me for a Master System platformer, that I think I can provide. So let's go for one you can only play properly on the Master System, Sonic Chaos. It's not super cheap, but if you were watching this, even considering paying for the Smurfs game, you can find yourself 20 quid for a good copy of Chaos on eBay. It is genuinely my favourite Sonic game. Conclusions? No Master System game is worth three figures. Sims are basically wizards. And if you want a shoot 'em up played right, give it to Bloggo. Stay tuned to this channel for your monthly dose of Yesterzine and for much more Master System to come. Later!